Hello there! Welcome to Skanky Productions. I'm Crow Grace Crocon. Let's get into the video. Today's video we're going to be continuing with our alternative history series. And in today's video we're going to be asking the question of what if Belarus united with Russia? So if you like what you've seen already, don't forget obviously hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, hit the bell button so you stay notified, and also don't forget to check out our many other videos on a whole range of different topics. I promise that you will not be disappointed. And also we have to give a massive shout out to everyone who left a comment in the last video. So this is a new thing that we're trying from now on where we're going to give shout outs to people uh, who leave a comment in the videos. So you know, biggest shout out to you guys. I'm not going to do like what I did last time because that just took a bit too long. But still, big shout out to you. I couldn't have done it without you. And now, without any further ado, we're going to dive straight now into the actual video. So the history of Belarus dates all the way back to the Kievan Rus, which is the starting point of Russia, Belarus and Ukraine, which we've covered in previous videos as well, so definitely go and check those ones out. So fast forward to the uh, polish lithuanian Commonwealth, so you can see on the map here, you know, the whole region here, which is controlled by Poland and Lithuania. So what would later become Ukraine end up being controlled largely by the Poles, but what would later become Belarus was predominantly controlled by Lithuania. Obviously, Lithuania still has a very much a smaller population than Poland, and that was also the case back in those days. So as a result, the influence that the Lithuanians had on the uh, Belarusians was much less than what the uh, Polish effect was on the Ukrainians. Now, fast forward once again to 1796, and this is the partition of Poland. So this is where Russia, uh, Austria and Prussia came together and divided up the Polish Commonwealth, and Russia ended up getting the eastern part of that. So with the eastern part of this, which uh, Russia had annexed, they uh, turned this into the Belarusian government. So this was from 1796 to 1802. So as you can see, obviously it didn't last for that long. And this is because Russia ended up splitting the government again in two. So fast forward now to the 1840s, and this is where the period of Russification ended up beginning. So this is under Tsar Nicholas I, and obviously later Tsars and later Russian administrations would kind of intensify this. So this was the banning of the Belarusian language and also the pressuring of many of the locals to convert from Roman Catholicism, which was the religion of the uh, Polish Lithuanian Commonwealth, towards Eastern Orthodox Christianity, which is obviously the uh, main faith within Russia. So apart from one minor uh, revolt, which took place in 1864, Belarusian uh, national identity was largely suppressed, but also largely dormant. And it wasn't until 1918, where you're obviously having the aftermath of World War I. And this is where, in that brief period, yeah, during the Russian Civil War, as we covered in that video, definitely go and check that out, Belarus, for a brief amount of time, had an independent state, and this was the Belarusian People's Republic. Now, this state here was very short-lived, it only lasted for one year, and it was also a German puppet state, so it's obviously the German Empire basically had control over it. But in 1919, the Soviets end up uh, retaking this and basically having this within the Russian fold. So under the Soviets, you saw again a return of this Russification, although it should be noted that Belarus during this time end up becoming a Soviet Socialist Republic. And also we should say that World War II was really, really devastating for Belarus and actually affected Belarus more than any other country on earth. So 25.3% of its population was killed off in that war. And actually it took until 1971 before the population ended up recovering to what it had been before the war. So you can see on this demographic chart here, even to this day, you can see the effect that World War II had on the Belarusian people. So fast forward now and uh, you have the dissolution of the USSR and actually you had three UN member states. So this was the Soviet Union, Ukraine and Belarus. Yes, Belarus and Ukraine were UN member states, even though they were still part of the Soviet Union. And this is because of the little trick that uh, Stalin did at right at the beginning of it, where you know, he wanted the Soviet Union to have extra votes, long story. But still, you had Russia, Belarus and uh, Ukraine in December of 1991 coming together to sign the dissolution of the USSR. And so this is where Belarus for the first time was actually independent. Also, it seems 
because while Russia had kind of gone down the path uh, under Yeltsin of liberal democracy, or at very least flirting with the idea of it, for Belarus, very quickly, it took a sharp turn towards authoritarianism. And this is with the election in 1994 of Alexander Lukashenko. So he has been you know, the dictator of Belarus all this time. He actually proudly says he's the last dictator of Europe. And actually, if you look at all the different elections which happened since that time, he has apparently won 77% of the vote or more in every single one of these elections and every single one of these referendums. So either he's the most popular leader of all time or there's some funny business going on. And I think we all know what the actual answer to that was, that yeah, definitely there was some funny business going on. But still, Lukashenko in power, the two things that were quite notable. First of all, he maintained the Soviet uh, central planning in terms of like how the economy was structured. So the Belarusian state was still very active within the lives of the Belarusian people. But also, he continued the policy of Russification, even though Belarus on paper was independent. And they found that 71% of Belarusians speak Russian at home. So not Belarusian, they speak Russian at home as their primary language. So it kind of gives you an idea of just how strong the Russification has been on Belarus, that even after independence, they still don't really have much of a national identity. And part of the reason for this is to do with a language barrier. So if you look at Russian speakers, Belarusian speakers and Ukrainian speakers, what you'll find is that the Russian speakers can understand about 84% of spoken Belarusian, but they can only understand about 50% of spoken Ukrainian. So which shows that you know, the influence of the polish lithuanian Commonwealth, you can see the long-lasting effects of this. And this is part of the reason why Ukrainian is so heavily influenced by Polish, whereas Belarus had hardly any influence at all from the Lithuanians, and this is how they were able to basically keep much of their language much the same as it would be for the Russians. So in 1997, it came as no surprise to anyone when Lukashenko and Boris Yeltsin end up coming together to sign the declaration for a union state. So what this would have seen is that the two nations of Russia and Belarus would have merged together to become one confederation in which both parties had an equal say. So the reason why Lukashenko ended up uh, signing this deal, because you think, why would he sign away you know, his own nation's independence? It's because he had the mad dream of basically succeeding Yeltsin after Yeltsin resigned. And so therefore, he would no longer just be the leader of Belarus, but in time would end up being the leader of Russia and Belarus. And so you would start to see the beginnings of a reformation of the Soviet Union. So that was the end goal. However, fate acted very differently. And this is when Boris Yeltsin in late 1999, he resigned and he appointed Vladimir Putin to take over. So of course, Vladimir Putin has pretty much run Russia throughout all this time. And Lukashenko, similarly, he's kind of gone backward and forward, depending on you know, his mood that day. Sometimes he's been closer to Russia and wanted there to be more integration. Some days he's been like, no, we want to you know, stay independent or we want to be closer to the EU. So he's kind of chopped and changed quite a bit, uh, depending on how he feels about the situation. But what is not up for debate is that there's still a great deal of closeness between Russia and also Belarus and vice versa. So the question we're going to ask in this video here is what would have happened if Lukashenko would have basically succeeded Boris Yeltsin instead of Vladimir Putin? So that's what we're going to dive into now. So the dissolution of the uh, Soviet Union had a huge negative economic effect on all the countries within that bloc. And in particular, if we look at Russia, Belarus and Ukraine, we can see the data here. So from 1990 to 1995, the economy of Russia in terms of its GDP per capita fell by 31%. However, for Belarus at the same time, it fell by 39%. And as you can see here, it's not as if they were starting off from a great place to begin. And also we should throw in there that Ukraine suffered even more greatly uh, from the, the collapse of the Soviet Union and that actually its economy contracted by 48% in that same time. So this is part of the reason why Ukraine today is still one of the poorest countries in all of Europe. And then on top of that, whereas Vladimir Putin from 2000 onwards, he liberalised the, the economy quite a bit and he actually privatised quite a few things. 
So as a result, Russia was able to have a great, a great recovery. Belarus didn't really do that. Like we said, they still continued much of the state planning, which uh, they had in Soviet days. So as a result, their recovery was much less. So what you can see here is that from the year 2000 to 2010, the Russian economy in terms of GDP per capita rose by 106%, whereas the Belarusians rose by just 88% in that same time. So the thing is that obviously if Lukashenko had taken over as opposed to Vladimir Putin, you would see that the living standards of the Russian people would be less so than what it is today. And actually this is part of the reason why many of the Russian people support Putin to this day, because they remembered what it was like in the 1990s and they remembered how you know Putin not only made Russia feel stronger, but actually made the Russian people a lot richer, yeah, in terms of you know the actual living standards rising. So if Lukashenko had been the one in charge and he kind of had kept things largely the same in relative terms, it's likely that he wouldn't be that popular. And actually, we can kind of see this in the polling now. So what you can see, obviously, first of all, we have to kind of say that polling from Russia or Belarus is not always going to be that accurate. However, something to come kind of note is obviously we have international polling agencies which can go into these places. So first of all, we have Chatham House. So what you can see there is that people within Belarus have a very, very positive view of Vladimir Putin. So 56% of them have a positive view of him compared to just 22% who have a negative view. And then when we look at the OSW figures, what we can see is that Putin has an approval rating of 60% versus just 27%, which is negative. Now, when you compare this to Lukashenko, you can see that Lukashenko has just a 40% positive approval rating compared to 45% negative. And also another further thing within this OSW report, what they found is that 54% of Belarusians support a deeper integration with Russia as opposed to just 37% who are opposed. So it shows that even like you know, over two decades after uh, the Union State Treaty was signed, it shows that Belarusians at a very fundamental grassroots level still favour a closer tie with Russia. Although it should be noted that just 7% of people want there to be a full integration with Russia. So they still want Belarus to have some autonomy, just as it did in Soviet days, but they want them to be basically the same country still. So this is quite interesting, yeah, that within Belarus, you can see how, you know, the Belarusian people don't even like Lukashenko. So much less the Russian people who are, of course, very patriotic and, you know, very nationalistic and stuff, right? So, yes, obviously, you know, Belarus and Russia is very similar, but at the same time, they still would want a Russian leading what is essentially Russia. Because obviously this would be the largest country in the world as Russia already is the largest country in the world, so adding on Belarus would make it slightly bigger. But still, it's a thing where the Russians would want to be leading. So if it was, you know, Vladimir Putin, as we can see here, Vladimir Putin is popular in Belarus. He's actually more popular than Lukashenko is in Belarus. So again, we can get an idea that Lukashenko had been the one who was, uh, took over after Yeltsin. His popularity levels would probably be worse than they are today. So in conclusion, I have to come to the conclusion that Russia and Belarus today, this union state, it would be a very stable union. However, it'd be a very unstable dictatorship. And the reason is Lukashenko just isn't that popular. Unlike Putin, who gave Russia both its military might and also its economic might, well, in relative terms, Lukashenko would have done neither of those things, in my opinion. Although it should be noted that Lukashenko, unlike Putin, you know, he's not really a warmonger, so would the things in Georgia and in Ukraine have happened? Probably not. But at the same time, if we bear in mind the fact that Lukashenko's are only in office still because Putin props him up, and that if it was up to the Belarusian people, he would be out a long time ago. If you have him running Belarus and also uh, Russia at the same time, I can't see that dictatorship lasting to this present day. And I think at some point things would have, he would have been overthrown. Maybe Putin in this alternate timeline would have risen to power and kind of like, you know, sorted things out. But yeah, on its own terms, I can't see this necessarily lasting. But of course, let me know in the comment section what you think about this, because obviously I'm just one opinion. And also as well, don't forget that we're going to give you a shout out in the next video uh, for uh, writing a comment. So definitely don't forget to do that. And uh, also stay tuned in the next video for uh, what if 
Russia was never conquered by the Mongols. So we're going to explore uh, the history with regard to all of that. But in the meantime, oh yeah, don't forget, hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, hit the bell button so you stay notified, and also check out all of our other videos. And yeah, definitely stay tuned for that one, which is coming up in two weeks. And in the meantime, have a great day and bye.